particular piece of legislation. And so the requirement that they specifically have is this would be for companies that are making over $50 million um, in revenue or average gross. And then also it would either apply to companies that have or possess uh, cons over 1 million consumer devices or reach more than uh, 1 million consumers. So I could see it being integrated into a larger framework that's already about algorithmic accountability. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Whitaker and Mix uh, Bowen-Weeney, you both advocated, in fact all of you did, for a more diverse workforce. I've written legislation to do that. It really doesn't go anywhere around here. Um, what's a realistic way to get that done? How, how do we, do we uh, diversify the workforce here? Well, I, I would hope that people continue to try to write legislation and, and make it effective because this is a, we have a diversity crisis in this industry. It has not gotten better, it has gotten worse in spite of years and years of diversity rhetoric and PR. Uh, we're looking at an industry where... In so, so you think government is the, is the right tool to make that happen? I think we need to use as many tools as we have. Um, I think we need to mandate pay equity and transparency. We need to mandate much more thorough protections for people who are the victims of sexual harassment uh, in the workplace. This is a problem that tech has. And we need to look at the practice of hiring and leveling because you see a pattern within these companies where women and people of color are hired for positions that are far below the level that men are hired at, um, even though they have the similar qualifications. Um, I would add that we also need to look at the practice of hiring increasing numbers of contract workers. These workers are extremely vulnerable to harassment and discrimination. They don't have the protection of full-time employees and you have seen at Google at this point, more than half the workforce is made up of contract workers across all job types. So this isn't just janitorial staff or service workers, this is engineers, designers, team leads that don't have the privileges of full employment and thus don't have the safety to push back against inequity. I've run out of time, so I can't pursue that. I yield back. Thank you very much, Ms. Gonzalez Colon. Thank you, Madam Chair. And yes, I have two questions. Sorry, I was running from another, another markup. Uh, Dr. Turasi, the University of Puerto Rico uh, Mayaguez campus, uh, which is in my district, is an uh, artificial intelligence education and research institute uh, that facilitates the exposure of young students to the field of artificial intelli intelligence. Their core mission is to advance knowledge and provide education in artificial intelligence theory, methods, system, and applications to contribute to human society and to economic prosperity. My, my question will be, in your view, how can we engage with institutes of higher, uh, higher, higher education uh, to promote similar uh, initiatives uh, or efforts, keeping in mind um, in generating interest in artificial intelligence in young students um, from all areas and how we can, uh, how, how can we be secure that uh, what is produced later on is responsible, ethical, and financially profitable? So as you mentioned, the earlier we start uh, recruiting workforce, um, our trainees, uh, that reflect the actual workforce with education uh, and the diversity that is needed, that is extremely important. When the AI developers reflect the actual user community, then we know that we have arrived. That cannot be achieved only with academic institutions. This is a societal responsibility for all of us. Um, I can tell how the national laboratories are working in this space. We are enhancing the academic uh, uh, places and opportunities by offering internship op opportunities to students who often otherwise they do not come from research institutions and this is the first time for them that they can work in a thriving research place. So we need to be thinking more outside the box and how we can all work synergistically uh, and continuously. <laughs> On this. Thank you. I, I, I want to share with you as well that my office recently had a meeting with 
uh, representative of the spinal uh, injury organization. Uh, and they were commenting of the challenges they have on approaching American manufacturers, uh, specifically car manufacturers, on accessible auto autonomous vehicles. Uh, several constituents with disabilities rely on them or on similar equipment uh, for maintaining some degree of independence uh, and rehabilitation. My question will be, in your view, how can we engage that private sector you, you was just talking a few seconds ago, and the manufacturers uh, that, so we not only ensure that artificial intelligence products um, uh, are ethical or inclusive, uh, but provide opportunities for all sectors of the community, in other words, make this working for everyone. How can, how, how can we arrange that? If I understood your question, you're asking how we can build more effective bridges. 